Hey guys, it's Mac from Simple Theory Gear. Had two questions come up over this past uh, week, so we're gonna address those both in this video. The first one pertains to making char cloth and using our char fire tin. And the second one is how to clean the stove. If you get some residue on it, or if you have, uh, have been using our fat wood and some of that has that sticky residue with it. Uh, so we're gonna address both of those in this video. To start with though, I'm trying to get the fire going. Um, I have in here basically what comes in your char fire. Uh, you get three of our ACS cubes and then plenty of denim cut down into different swatches so you can have some good char cloth on the back end. So all I'm gonna do is get this fire started and we're bringing back guys on with the uh, kind of important tips, so it be. All right, so the fire is getting established. The ring is on top. So this is just what I do. Uh, there's plenty of videos online about d different methods, uh, different materials to use, but when you get the char fire, it's gonna have denim, or some kind of cotton-based material. Uh, and then I just kind of pack it in, not too tightly into the tin, and then make sure you have, of course, a hole punched in the top, and that's gonna allow the off gas to come out as that material chars. And then just put the lid on, and you put it on top of the pack stove. Now, what's gonna happen, and I'll bring you guys back for this part, is that as the charring process inside the tin happens because you're starving it of oxygen you'll see combustible gas start coming out of the vent here and what I do is I let it go for quite a while you can start seeing some of the venting now um, and then I will actually take it off let the tin cool open it up and kind of reorganize some of that material because I want it in all over char uh, and, and make sure that there's not some material that is being charred and others is kind of not so as you see, here's that top start. It'll really start getting going once uh, more and more heat builds up inside the container. So we'll bring you guys back for that, probably in about two minutes or so, to kind of show you what to look for. And then uh, we'll open it up, reorganize it, and I'll show you that too as well. So as you see, or as hopefully you can see in this wind, um, we have the, the gas exiting through our pinhole. One thing you may have to do, and I forgot to say, always have pliers on you when doing this process. Uh, one, because we'll be taking this off soon to kind of move around some of the material, but also a, a sticky kind of liquid will come as just part of the process. And you're gonna have to take something to clean out the hole to make sure it still can breathe as you go through. So make sure you have those pliers. And as we take this off, and you're gonna let it sit, if you open it too soon, you're creating, in a very small sense, a backdraft. It would happen to a normal fire, where you have an oxygen-starved fire on the inside, and when you open that up, you give it a big breath of air, and it may flash, and your material will just consume itself. So make sure it's properly cooled uh, before opening. So we're gonna take it off and check it out. So this is just the middle ground. Uh, by far, not done enough, it was still getting some good off gas but just kind of show you what's going on on the inside uh, and usually I have I do have gloves but let's cool down so I can touch it take it off and you can see that we only have partial char on the bottom section and that's why I really recommend kind of opening it up we're just gonna flip it over all right separate it a little bit to get some air passage through close it back up and put it right back on the fire All right, so as you can see, uh, any smoke coming out the porthole uh, is pretty much diminished. So I think that means we have a pretty good char. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna take this off, I'm just gonna knock it off. Um, and we're gonna let this cool down now. Again, you don't wanna open it up right now because it'll introduce too much oxygen to an oxygen-starved fire, and, and that's kind of what's happening in there. But we're gonna move on to cleaning the stove. Uh, now, I was using apple wood and some other hardwood in this, so it's definitely not as tarry as it normally is when I use pine. We have a lot of pine in this area. But what you're going to see me do is what I do all the time for my stove. Uh, I've been using this stove for almost a year now. Never any issues. It's the reason we built it tough. And that is basically quenching the stove. So it also, as you see, we have all this sand around me in my area. So what I'm going to do is first we're just going to and as you already see i'll show you the areas that i have hit and ones that i have not hit all right so then i'm going to take these pieces out using the pliers 
you should have. I'm just gonna remove the ring, put it over there for now. All right. Now I am going to, I have a bag with me. Once these coals cool off, I'll put them in the bag, bring them home, throw them away. Uh, so we're not littering too much. But right here, and then when this is touchable, which is pretty much touchable now, I'm gonna rub it in the sand. Take the rest of the water I brought with me just for this process. Give it a little bath, and we're good to go. So we, I will just take now, I'll take a bandana, dry off the inside, and then we're ready to go. Take my little base plate, put that down, put that down. Stove ring goes on underneath, and we're off and down the trail. So that's just how I clean mine. Um, and again, we advocate that. So it's not a warranty issue, it's not going to warp. We use, again, thick steel, it's of uniform construction. And we'll just get this little pile together and ready to bring it home. All right, we'll get them back one more time, show you guys the inside of the char tin, and uh, send you on your way. Thanks, guys. Right, so just the final check, getting it in. Um, the, some of the top pieces look good. Uh, you can tell because it, it's extremely flaky. That's what I like. It'll catch a spark when it's really flaky. Uh, to be honest with you, what I'll probably do, because some of the bottom pieces still have some color to them, is that I'll just, on my next fire, I'll, I'll use the good pieces and just return the, the ones that need more time just right back in the tin. And that's really nice by having that next fire mentality. Uh, they just kind of build up and build along. So a real smart thing to do too is when you get home, or even right now I could, I don't have my flint and steel with me, is just to check it. Because if you have everything already set up, you're good to go. Uh, and then also, here's where we had our fire. As you see, take away the uh, any kind of the remnants with you, or you can just bury it, um, and then just leave no trace. So something we kind of advocate here at Simple Theory Gear. If you have any questions, guys, let me know. Again, that is just my process. If you have a better process, please let us know. Uh, I'm always looking looking to learn myself. So just go ahead and drop that in the comment section. Again, hope you guys are doing well, and we'll talk to you right here in the next Simple Theory Gear.